guys, Papa Pepper back once again. We're getting into the winter months. It's like halfway through December already. Temperatures are dropping. A lot of the cold-blooded animals like reptiles and amphibians are going dormant for the season. A lot of places they're hibernating. Back in my native Wisconsin, I wouldn't be able to find anything except for maybe some turtles, you know, down at the bottom of a lake right now that you might happen to see. But in the Ozarks, we normally find them kind of on the warm days throughout the winter. Um, that's cool, that's a blessing, we love that. And in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to two of my favorite non-venomous species that we can find in our area and on our property that also happen to be a couple of the largest and longest snake species, non-venomous snakes in the state. So, love these snakes, so cool to encounter them, so awesome to see it. Thankfully, I've been recording footage of them for a number of years now. And I'm going to sort through some of my favorite videos featuring both the Eastern Coach Whip and the Black Rat Snake. And I love these guys. They're so cool to see. They're not always welcome on our property for a number of reasons, but the ones that we move off of our property, we move to a different geographical location rather than just moving to some snake grave like a lot of people do. And as always, I think it's important to educate ourselves, especially, you know, if there's venomous snakes that could potentially kill you. <laughs> bit by a venomous snake. Note the difference in the thumbs there. This one's much fatter. The difference in the width of the hands. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. And there's non-venomous snakes. It is a load off of people's shoulders when they see a snake to know, you know what, this snake will not actually kill me or my children. I think education is important. I think being able to identify the differences is important. So I'm just going to kind of give you guys quite a few looks couple different individuals in each of these cases and hopefully it'll bless some of you, educate some of you, and give you a greater appreciation for some of the things that God has made out there that do serve purposes even if they also strike fear in a lot of people. Papa Pepper here with another episode of the Wild Man's Wild Friends. This is one of my favorite snakes. This is the black rat snake, Pantherophis obsoletus. Um, technically, this is the longest officially the longest snake in North America. Um, I think eight foot five inches was the longest. They're a beautiful snake. We had them up in Wisconsin, but in Wisconsin they were actually a, a threatened or endangered species, which meant two things. One, you wouldn't see them as often, and two, when you did find them, you wouldn't want to get caught with one in your possession. Even if I was to take this one back up to Wisconsin right now, if I got a DNR officer that found me with it, I'd be fined because it's a native species there and they can't uh, you know, determine the place of origin. And since it's protected there, you're not allowed to uh, have them there. Now this is actually the most widely distributed uh, rat snake in North America. It spans a lot of the uh, eastern half of the country and there's even some isolated populations up in uh, Canada. One thing I like about them is the beautiful belly color. It'll start out white, go white to black, Kind of head black to uh, red, and then eventually just go completely down to black. This one's a pretty big one here. They're an excellent climbers, and I'll show you just one different one with a uh, slightly different color pattern here. This one is a lot more red on the belly. Um, kind of that nice peach pink color. Um, they are pretty um, defensive. If you grab them, often they'll bite you. Um, that's what that guy was doing when I first had him there. Um, they're excellent climbers, like I said. They'll feast on all sorts of stuff, small mammals, um, birds, they're big egg eaters. And I kind of share this for an educational purpose for those of you who've never seen it, so you get the opportunity to see it. Because this one was actually caught eating eggs from under our ducks. So if you've never seen how the bottom jaws of a snake unhinge, open really big, they get kind of this big old bucket mouth and this tiny little head here, you know, which is really like the size of my thumb, all of a sudden stretches out to the point it's eating a duck egg. If you've never seen that, this is your opportunity. I'm just gonna kind of leave it raw and uncut. Uh, check this out if you've never seen it before. It's just amazing, the capabilities, the way they were designed to be able to do that. Um, I don't know, it just blows my mind. So hopefully you can enjoy it for what it's worth.
Wow, that is beautiful and a good size. He looks healthy. Wow, yeah, it's got eggs in it for sure. That's probably the biggest one I've seen this year. I can feel the eggs in it. I can feel them. One, two, three, four, five. At least five. Look at that neck, too. There we go. That's one cracking right here. Oh. That's an egg right there. I'm seeing it's about to lose the shell. I'm thinking. Oh! Oh! Boy, there is so much crunching going on in this snake right now. that I have the blessing of encountering a snake like I just did. I am so happy as well that more and more of my neighbors are turning just to calling me if they have a snake problem and giving me an opportunity to run up there and take care of it rather than just killing them or something like that. So when I got that call, I rushed up. And around here, you know, black rat snakes are a dime a dozen. And in fact, if you actually know someone selling them, a dime for a dozen of them let me know because I'll totally buy them I think the last time we had a dozen is when we found some eggs and kept an eye on them and happened to catch them when they were hatching so some of my children even held them in their hands and let them hatch out that way
you know, around here it's not uncommon to find a black rat snake like this. This guy's maybe heading up towards four feet, probably over three. Pretty common. And, you know, we encounter these often enough. Sometimes you may even be lucky enough to find one heading a little bit bigger. Like this guy, who's probably over four feet, heading up towards five. Definitely a nice looking snake. And uh, one I enjoy, whoa, encountering. Man. It's trying to get me so bad right now. I'm just not gonna let it. But to find something like this, I will take a step back. Look at that, compared to just the size of those other ones. This thing is a crazy beast, and compared to those other ones, you know, to see this much pattern on it just shows how, how big it is. Um, this thing was obviously eating very well. They said for a while that their egg production had gone down, and they weren't sure why. They keep their chickens in a little area next to their sheep, or their goats, actually. And uh, they milk their goats on one side, they have their chickens in the other. They've got like a little doggy door, because they uh, repurposed a door from a job um, to let the chickens kind of come in and out. And that keeps the goats out of there. So their daughter, who's young, went in to collect the chicken eggs. And she went across the bottom getting all of them, and then she came up to the top. And as you saw from that capture video, this guy was in the second one of the top. So all of a sudden she's looking this thing in the face and um, she's terrified. She's got the door shut, she starts screaming. They take a peek and they give me a call. Now I keep my snake bags in the truck, I keep my snake tongs and my snake hook in the truck so it's, it's there if I need it. I grabbed a couple of my children because they're rather experienced with things and um, you know, even when we pulled in, I had two main snakes I was thinking. I was thinking either it's going to be a black rat snake or a copperhead. Um, just where they live, the type of stuff they deal with, those were my two thoughts. I wasn't sure what it was going to be, so I came up there, uh, I pulled in, they said it was a black snake. So I said, okay, probably a black rat. I left um, the vehicle and got in there, and sure enough it was, but you know, if it had been something else, I would have been able to, you know, have my children run back to the truck and hand me in, you know, snake tongs or something like that. So, thankfully, it was one of these, but this would definitely show you the lack of egg production. Um, it puked up one, but there was at least another six or seven eggs, maybe, inside of this snake. And that's going to help this thing. I mean, if it's got a feed source like that, it's going to grow. Let me see you guys head there. Pulling, 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 oh, about five and a half feet actually. You can let it go, son. I was guessing six, but it looks like it's over five and a half feet. Very crazy cool, big, beautiful snake. And uh, wow, only five and a half, crazy. Now black rat snakes are very arboreal and they can climb right up like the side of a tree. You can see this tree, there's really no branches or anything on it, but if I put it here, just kind of straighten it out, look at how quickly it just grabs on to really nothing, and it can climb. So that keeled belly it has will just kind of grip in, and each of those little ridges down the bottom will grab a hold and let them just climb right up that. I mean, if I turn this sideways, You'd almost think that thing was going across the ground, how smooth it's doing that. But it's really heading just about straight up a tree. But these are a beautiful big snake. They will cause problems for uh, homesteaders and farmers, but they also do, as you would expect with a name like rat snake, they take care of a lot of the rats and rodents that you'll find. So they're uh, not entirely bad to have around if you know uh, kind of where they are and what they're up to. You keep them out of your uh, your animals. Um, with them being such a beautiful big snake, I think it's really cool. I used to have some pythons and stuff like that, red-tailed boa, so to have a wild snake that you can get, you know, being like that big, I think is just incredible. And uh, I really enjoy, enjoy being able to see them quite frequently down here in Arkansas, so. That's one of my wild friends. 
slide. It's Papa Pepper here with one of the Wild Man Wild friends. This is incredible because this is the first one of these I've ever caught. This is a coach whip snake. If you notice, it's got a very cool jet black face and throat that fades all the way back to this nice light tan with some almost pinkish hues in it. These are among some of the longest snakes in North America. Um, very happy to find this one today. I saw one dead on the road two years ago and I was like, man, that's a coach whip. Like, I wish, I wish I had the opportunity to catch that, you know, when it was still alive. And then I think I saw one for a moment, but these guys are also among some of the fastest snakes in the area. They can head like 15 miles an hour. They've got really good eyesight and before um, you usually have a chance to even notice that they're there, they're gone. So this is incredible. This is beautiful. This is a very happy day for my people. We were just driving on the road. I saw it. I saw it turn to go off the road. I saw the different colored tail. I said, that is a coach whip. I pulled over safely and then uh, was able to actually capture this guy. And one thing that happens is when you do see these guys, like I said, they got very good eyesight. They'll normally take off before you can ever even see them. If you do try to catch them, they're normally so fast it's hard to. But then as well, um, if you do grab them, they've got a very long strike range. They will try to bite you in the face like immediately. This one's taken quite a few swings at me when I was holding them about at arm's length and it was still hitting me in the shirt. So very cool. Uh, these guys, what do they eat? Uh, mammals, they eat birds, they eat lizards. Um, they're diurnal, so they hunt during the daytime. They use their eyesight and scent to, to locate prey. They're not a constrictor, they don't have venom, so they just get a hold of their prey and hang onto it and swallow it whole. Um, they'll breed June, July, lay a, lay a clutch of a dozen or more eggs usually. And uh, the babies actually, when they hatch out, they're like a foot to almost a foot and a half when they hatch. So that's very cool, very incredible for a snake to start off that big. I mean, some snakes I know they start off and they're like three or four inches long. start out at like a foot, foot and a half is is incredible. Very cool. Um, there's a lot of myths with these snakes that they will try to whip people with their tail, they'll chase people. Normally it gets scared when you get scared, you guys both happen to take off in the same direction. Seriously, if, if snakes would chase people, I would catch a lot more of them. I gotta haul my butt through all sorts of underbrush, all sorts of greenbrier, into swamps, into lakes, just to try to catch these things because they're constantly fleeing from me. I actually wish they would try to catch me once in a while. Um, and also people believe that this was the one that people would refer to as the hoop snake. There was a myth a while ago about snakes that would bite onto their tail and just roll. Doesn't happen. Um, doesn't try to whip you with its tail, anything like that. It's called a coach whip, partially because it's so long and slender, but partially also if you look at this, check out that scale pattern, okay? It almost looks like a braided coach whip that they'd actually use on the, uh, on the stage coaches, so. I'm going to let you guys see this long transition of color here. Just a beautiful snake. Check that out. Still going, right? Look at that. But uh, yeah, just a very cool, crazy, excellent snake. Um, this guy, again, if I let him out a bit, he'll probably take a couple swings at me. We'll see if, yeah. Check out that color. Check out those eyes. A very alert snake very cool definitely very happy to have found my first one and uh happy to have a supportive family too you know if i pull over on the side of the road because i want to try to catch a wild snake my wife encourages me okay she doesn't yell at me none of that she just makes sure that when i do those things that we do it safely so this is a beautiful snake i'm almost surprised he's not taking a swing at my face right now um it's got like the first 10 inches of its body completely free and I'm not holding him until about two feet back over here by my thumb. He's just resting on this hand in front. So very beautiful, very cool, very fast. 15 miles an hour and like I said, I think I saw one last year, but it took off so quick there was really nothing I could do. Um, I didn't stand a chance. Even though I wanted to, I wanted a chance. So guys, this is the coach whip. 
and you'll find them in a lot of different open habitats, um, coastal dunes and stuff like that. There's an eastern and western variety. There is quite a bit of a, a color variation on these guys and uh, very cool, very fast snakes. So when these guys can get over eight feet long, this is actually a little one. Although it does look pretty big and pretty menacing. All right guys, Papa Pepper here with an amazing snake. This is the Coach Whip. Now this is only the second one I've ever caught. These guys are crazy fast and it definitely took a lot of effort for me to get this guy. Um, I'll share some footage from right when I caught it with uh, Brian Phobos because he was with me filming it. So he's, uh, he's got some great footage I'll include in this video. But these guys are the fastest snake in North America. I was trying to recall when I first caught it, but I was so excited exactly how fast they go. They go about 10 to 15 miles an hour, which, you know, especially if you're heading through underbrush or through thick fields, um, is a lot if you're gonna try to catch this. I saw this one on the road and it took off into the ditch. I pulled over and kind of jumped out of the vehicle running after it, it crossed a fence line. I thought I lost it, but then it came back and I was pouncing and chasing and jumping back and forth for quite a while and uh, eventually I, I lost it. I didn't know where it was, but my, one of my daughters saw it up in a tree, um, you know, about a couple feet off the ground. But man, these guys are have great eyesight and they're a diurnal snake, which means they hunt during the daytime. Um, they'll kind of lift their heads up a lot in fields and things like that where they're hunting, see if they can find some prey and then they'll go. Um, they just kind of grab their food and swallow it. They don't constrict. And uh, besides being the fastest snake in North America, uh, they're even faster than a racer, okay? And if you saw a bit ago, I mean, racers are quick enough. I was hanging on to one just like this and it bit me in the face. So if you saw that, these guys are even quicker than racers. They're even quicker than that. And these guys are kind of known for going for the face when, when they're uh, handled, confronted, threatened, stuff like that. So this guy is super charged right now. He's not even that warm yet but he just wants to take off. And you can see as well the nice transition of color as it heads from a black kind of front. Ooh, man, he's, he's locked onto me right now. Kind of trailing down to this lighter uh, brown. And if you look at that scales and stuff there, that's why they call these guys coach whips because the, the tail almost looks like a braided coach whip. Very cool snake. So definitely love these guys. Definitely happy to find them. Like I said, this is only my second one ever. There is, uh, I think, six different uh, subspecies of these guys. Some of them will just be all tan. Some of them will be much more red for the tail uh, with a much darker head. I'm not sure. I think when this guy matures, it'll probably be even darker in the front and uh, maybe even more red in the back. I'm not sure, but incredible snake. You can find them in the United States um, pretty much coast to coast. And uh, there'll be different color variations, but from coast to coast and across northern Mexico as well. So. A very interesting, very cool, super fast snake that we are, uh, we're happy to see. So, definitely a cool one. I'll cut to that footage of Phobos and then I'll get back with you guys in a minute. Gotta keep him far away from your face. As a coach whip. Because, if you look at their, he musked on me. That's what that is, we'll go swimming later. But their tail transitions from this black up here. This beautiful red and it kind of looks like a braided coach whip. Oh man, second one ever in my entire life. These guys, what, 26 miles an hour? I forget what they do. They're, they're crazy fast. Yeah, that was fast. They cross the fence and I'm like, oh, it's over. And then it cut back and I'm like, yes. And I saw, so, I got I spikes saw it hanging on a tree. And when you grab them, they're known to go for the face. Uh -huh. but look at those big eyes. Very arboreal, but glow right up in the tree like no problem. Thank you, child. Thanks for coming out to help. Do we even have an empty snake bag right now, kids? Uh, I think we yeah, have, but it has... Uh, I'll hang on to them for now. You guys can hang on to them. Oh, one of these, it was the same type thing, but I was driving with my family, and we were on pavement, not on the uh, gravel road, and I'm like, that's a coach whip! I'm like, pull over! Like, I dove into the ditch, missed it with my first grab, grabbed it with the second one, and uh, it was huge. But these guys, just amazing snakes, non-venomous, super fast. There's a lot of different uh, color morphs. This is kind of the more common one here where you go from a black to kind of the coach whip, you know, red type whatever on the back. Where it looks like a braided coach whip. Just beautiful, very long tails. Um, super fast snake, super fast. Um, I'd have to remember, I'm excited right now, but this might be the fastest snake in North America. I'm not, really? I can't, I can't recall. It was fast. Yeah, and you saw me, I mean, 
you saw me hustle on the court, which we'll do again in a minute, but I hustle and I need to, and man, thank you so much. I didn't know where it went. Went up in a tree, and you saw even that grab. I just like dove into the tree at it, because I'm like, ah, I'm not taking this slow. This snake is not slow. So, just beautiful. So this guy, you know, I mean, he's still two or three feet almost. He's over two, he's in the three. I did not expect this. <laughs> but that's that's like you asked, you know, do I just go out and look for him? Well, a lot of times you just see him. If you dive in the bushes after him, it's a lot easier to catch him. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see, I mean, obviously a very dangerous, life-threatening situation. <laughs> a young girl to be in. Well, it's definitely changed my perception. <laughs> Just watching your videos over the last couple of years, yeah. it's definitely changed my perception. And just to see the kids like handle the snakes and not right. be scared of them, that actually, the first time I saw that, it kind of tripped me out. I was right. like, what? Well, and you know, people can be afraid about anything. You know, we can be afraid of frogs. I know people who are. And I once saw a woman, she jumped back when she realized one of my children had a frog on her hand. She went, ah! So her 12 year old son standing next to her, ah! And I'm like, oh no, it just did the worst thing it ever did. And they're like, what did you do? What did you do? I'm like, it hopped. I'm like, this is. <laughs> so I can pass, you know, education onto my children. I'm not going to make them do something like this, but if they're comfortable with it and they understand, uh, you know, yes, they could get bit by a non-venomous snake. We all have to clean their wounds, make sure it doesn't get infected. You know, snake don't crush their teeth. But for the most part, this snake doesn't think it's going to harm. She's going to harm it. This snake's pretty chill. And uh, she's comfortable with it. And if we find a venomous, dangerous one, they can tell. They can identify and they can say, okay, we'll steer clear of this. So. It's just uh, just an educated life. We respect the creatures, we appreciate them, and uh, if they're going to pose a real threat, I'll take care of it, we'll remove it from the area so the kids can be safe and have fun. So if you saw there, um, we actually had it at the swimming hole too. Um, this one we found on the way to a basketball rematch. It makes a brief cameo in that video where uh, Brian Fobos challenged me to rematch at basketball. And then we wanted to check out the uh, swimming hole. He had saw my video on um, kind of welcome to my world and just checking out different things. And he was amazed at the crystal clear water, all the fish in there. So he wanted to head there. And that's where you'll see the footage of, of my daughter just kind of hanging out of this one as it's swimming for a little bit. A lot of snakes will head down to the water to drink. A lot of snakes will swim. Just because you see a snake at the water does not mean it's a water moccasin. And that's the point. I really can't drive home enough because I hear it so constantly. Um, just anytime anyone sees a snake down by the water, it's immediately a water moccasin. And that's so far from the truth, but it also goes to show in this information age when all the wisdom and intelligence and whatever in the world is directly at people's uh, fingertips on their handheld devices at any moment, that they're still just really ignorant about a lot of things, which is which is an interesting problem that we have in society. But anyway, beautiful snake, incredible. I'll see if I can't get some close footage of it, but the second I let this guy go, I mean, it's gone, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to uh, catch it. And I think the one point that's kind of cool that Brian Phobos was making is he says, man, after running around chasing these snakes all the time, you're really quick on the basketball court. So <laughs> just a little bit of a... Yeah, fun insight from him on kind of my lifestyle. So, all right guys, Coach Whip, second one ever. Incredible snake, I absolutely love it. So happy to see it and uh, blessed to be able to catch two. So, we'll see what happens in the future. I don't know about you guys, but to me that was some wild stuff. What a couple of intense, beautiful snakes. Both of those species are just amazing. I love how long and how big they get and just the coloration, the different variations in them, amazing. Absolutely wild. Love that stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, it was kind of recycling some old footage, but some great stuff that I've captured over the years. I like to use original content. This is the stuff that, you know, me and my family have created for some years now. And we have these videos in our own kind of library history of the things that we've done and seen and encountered. So just wanted to kind of create something special out of the footage and allow you guys to check it out. As always, our stuff varies a lot. Some of my most popular videos out there are snake videos, but we also do a lot of homesteading stuff, we're building stuff, we're wild edibles, enjoy a lot of adventure and fishing and things like that, do a lot of gardening. So it varies a lot. If you guys do like the content, feel free to seriously just give it a like. If you like it, let us know you like it. If you have a specific reason or something that you enjoyed from this video, leave a comment down below. I check out all my comments. I don't always reply to them all, 
but know that we're there reading them, and I appreciate you guys checking it out. I'll see you next time. Pop out.